7 in 7 series set 2 I request all the viewers to subscribe and press the bell icon for getting all the notifications on the subsequent videos coming to the first case 35 year female with chron his chronic history of recurrent abdominal pain these are the axial coronal sagittal uh, non contrast ct images here you can see there is a calcified uh, mass well defined calcified mass with peripheral hypodense rim noted, uh, noted in the right hepatorenal fossa close to the hepatorenal fossa or morrison's pouch this is close to the ileal loop uh, and also this is uh, mobile and freely moving in the abdomen so whenever you see there is a central calcified focus with peripheral hypodense rim closely uh, abutting or closely related to the bowel loop and freely mobile suspect peritoneal loose body so what is this peritoneal loose body or peritoneal mice generally epiploic appendages are susceptible to torsion acute torsion produces epiploic appendagitis which is self-limiting but sometimes chronic torsion will lead to auto amputation of the appendage which leads to ischemia subsequent calcification and that forms the peritoneal loose body so there will be mobile mass mostly in the dependent portion of the abdomen like in the morrison's pouch or even the pouch of douglas sometimes may be related to the bowel loop and usually 0.5 to 2.5 centimeters in length uh, in uh, diameter uh, sometimes may lead up to 10 centimeters which are called the giant loose bodies rarely they cause bowel obstruction or urinary incontinence so remember peritoneal loose body next case 62 year male hypertensive came to the er in unconscious state vision loss and seizures you can see there is a large uh, capsular ganglionic bead extending into the periventricular divide matter and central semivial there is even intraventricular hemorrhage and even there is a hemorrhage in the right cilium fissure basal cisterns and along the perimesial cisterns on right side and in the caudal sections clearly you can see there is a hemorrhage in the orbit there is intraocular hemorrhage on left side and even fluid free levels there is vitreous hemorrhage and even retinal or subretinal hemorrhage so this is a case of tarsan syndrome but in classical tarsan syndrome there will be vitreous hemorrhage associated with sarcoid hemorrhage but even tarsan syndrome can also occur in cases of intraparenchymal hemorrhages other than sarcoid hemorrhage so this is tarsan syndrome in intraocular intracranial hemorrhage so tarsan syndrome has been reported in 13 to 50 percent of patients with sarcoid hemorrhage classic tarsan syndrome refers to vitreous hemorrhage associated with sarcoid hemorrhage because there, in, there will be sudden rise in the intracranial pressure which leads to central retinal vein or retinal venous stasis which leads to vitreous hemorrhages and intraocular hemorrhages. So remember this case as Tarsan syndrome can also rarely occur in case of um, intraparenchymal hemorrhages, intraventricular hemorrhages, brainstem hemorrhages apart from sarcoid hemorrhage. Next case 21 year female with history of primary amenorrhea and secondary secretary characters were normal. You can see the uterus and vagina are not completely visualized. Here, this is the uterus and vagina not completely visualized. This is the bladder, this is the rectum. And also, you can see the both the ovaries are normally visualized and the right kidney is not visualized. So, this is a classical case of mayer rokitansky kushner hauser syndrome, which is nothing but class 1 Muller and duct anomaly. There will be typical form and atypical form. Typical form type A is nothing but congenital absence of uterus, upper two thirds of vagina with normal ovaries and fallopian tubes. Atypical form can be include associated abnormalities of ovarian, fallopian tubes, and renal anomalies. So this is a case of mayer rokitansky kushner hauser syndrome. Next case, 44-year-old male with complaints of abdominal pain and vomiting since two days. You can see this is the dilated stomach. This is the dilated duodenum. This is the dilated first, second and third part of the duodenum. And the third, fourth part is completely collapsed. And also this is the iota. This is the supermesentric artery. The iotomesentric distance is decreased. And there is acute angle between the supermesentric artery and the iota. So this is a classical case of supermesentric artery syndrome. Here you can see normally the supermesentric artery is uh, protected by fat and lymphatic tissue. But whenever there is a severe weight loss, the cushion is lost so that uh, the third part of the duodenum is compressed between the SMA and the iota. So and there will be retrograde dilatation of the first and second part and third part of the duodenum. And there is abrupt narrowing at the junction of third and fourth part of the duodenum. Normally, the iotomesentric angle and iotomesentric distance are 28 to 65 degrees and 10, 10 to 34 mm respectively. But in SMA syndrome, they are reduced to values between 6 to 22 degrees and 2 to 8 mm. Next case, 44-year female with recurrent history of abdominal pain. Here you can see this is the thickened right crust of diaphragm and even the uh, there is abnormal acute angulation and kinking of the celiac artery. Here you can see this is the thick end crust of the diaphragm which is causing J-shaped indentation over the celiac trunk with acute angulation and causing compression of the celiac artery. This is the supermesentric artery. So this is nothing but normal celiac artery and normal SMA. But in our case you can see this is the typical J-shaped indentation over the superior aspect of the celiac artery by the crust of the diaphragm. 
and even in the midline that is median at the level of median arcuate ligament so this is a classical case of median arcuate ligament syndrome next what is this median arcuate ligament syndrome which is a rare condition occurs in females between third to fifth decade and there's nothing but this is the normal uh, this is the right crust left crust and this is the median arcuate ligament on sometimes on deep inspiration this median arcuate ligament compresses the celiac trunk so thanks to usmania college students for contributing these cases of supermesenteric artery and median arcuate ligament syndrome next 44 year female with sigmoid colon carcinoma post operative status came with sudden onset of chest pain and dyspnea you can see there are mild prominent bronchial vascular markings and there is even blunting of the left cp angle here you can see there is a uh, filling defect noted on in the pulmonary trunk extending into the right and left main pulmonary branches and even the segmental and subsegmental branches with uh, pleural effusions here whenever you are uh, having a doubt please invert the images where you can see clear the tumor thrombus you can see on inversion images the tumor thrombus is more obvious next this is the typical saddle type of pulmonary thromboembolism at the pulmonary trunk extending into right and main, left main pulmonary arteries so this saddle pulmonary thromboembolism sometimes if it is large enough can lead to acute right heart failure and death and even uh, extensive embolic burden leads to uh, right heart strain which is uh, depicted by dilatation of the right ventricle straightening of the leftward bulging of the interventricular septum and even enlargement of the pulmonary trunk so this is a case of saddle type of pulmonary thromboembolism coming next case 62 year male with severe chest pain dyspnea and tachycardia here you can see there is abnormal dilatation of the ascending aorta and even there is dissection in the ascending aorta this dissection is also extending into the arch of aorta and also into the branches so there is abdominal aortic aneurysm with aortic dissection this is the true lumen this is the false lumen this is probably stanford type a or debacke type 2 type of aortic dissection and however this is that you can see these are the intimal layers this is nothing but classical intimo intimal intersubsection which is extending into the branches of the aorta so this is typical wind sock sign so this is wind sock which is mostly seen at the level uh, airports which helps the pilots to assess the wind direction and flow so that it helps in safe landing of the flights so this is the typical wind sock sign which is nothing but intimo intimal intersubsection here which is also extending into the branches here you can see it is extending into left common carotid left common carotid and even left subclavian arteries so remember wind sock sign so wind sock sign is nothing but seen in intermental intersubsection between the true and false lumen and also some sometimes wind sock sign is nothing but typical appearance of duodenal web that is intraluminal duodenal diverticulum so this is a case of ascending aortic aneurysm or dissection probably stanford type a and debacke type 2 with classical intimo intimal intersubsection so that is wind sock sign Thank you all.